Good morning. Thank you all for being here. I am here standing in solidarity with those who are calling for the immediate resignation of Mona Doman, who is the head of the U.S. Marshals for the District of Minnesota. I have known Mona Doman for over 10 years, starting back when she was the chief of police for Maple Grove, and then she became the commissioner of public safety for the state of Minnesota during a time in which our public safety officers were under scrutiny for their behavior as a part of the Metro Gang Strike Force and the gang databases and the racism and the discrimination that undergirded the practices of the Metro Gang Strike Force as well as the databases that were being used. So Mona Doman is no stranger to concerns surrounding a lack of accountability and transparency and oversight with regard to the behavior of law enforcement officers. Given her credentials, she should have known better than to allow the officers and deputies who were a part of the so-called North Star Violent Task Force to run around like glorified cowboys. That's exactly what they did on June 4th of 2021 when they ambushed a man who had just had a meal at Stella's in Uptown. They literally came into the parking ramp. We could see skid marks. You could see pictures of unmarked vehicles. Anyone caught in that situation would not know what was happening. And they used the full force and power of all of their weaponry and ammunition and the law in order to ambush and ultimately kill a black man and father. And the claims of Winston firing through a car are absolutely ridiculous, given the fact that they ambushed him. And this is very similar to what we saw happen to DeLaw Eade, a Minneapolis man who was gunned down by a task force in a sting operation on December 30th of 2020. So there is a pattern of officers acting like cowboys, ambushing so-called suspects, claiming that they shot at them without adequate evidence to support that, and then using that as a justification to riddle their bodies with bullets. We are demanding not only the resignation of Mona Doman, but we are demanding that all Minnesota law enforcement officers and deputies be removed from federal task forces immediately, particularly with the U.S. Marshals. We have seen reports from Ramsey County Sheriff Bob Fletcher claiming that he had been asking for body cameras to be used for his deputies. And even though he know, knew that the policy did not allow for the use of body cameras, he allowed those Ramsey County deputies to participate anyway. As a matter of fact, the originating warrant started out in Ramsey County. So Bob Fletcher needs to answer for his behavior as someone who allowed deputies to participate as part of a task force that lacked transparency, oversight, and accountability. That was the reason that Bob Fletcher lost his position as sheriff in the first place back in the 2000s because he was operating a gang database that lacked transparency and accountability and the political fallout led to him not being reelected so he ought to know better. He is trying to throw Mona Doman under the bus. She is accountable. He also needs to be held accountable along with Sheriff Hutchinson. We can contrast their behavior with Minneapolis and St. Paul police who, as a result of knowing that there was not the allowance of body cameras, made the decision to keep their officers out of that North Star task force. So we know that there is no requirement for these officers to be a part of this task force. One of my colleagues talked about the false media narratives that have come forward, that have tarnished the character of Winston Smith, that has caused the public to not pay as much interest into his case because they believe the false reports that he was a murder suspect. And given the amount of ammunition and the dozens of officers on the scene and the secrecy surrounding this case, many of us were wondering, was this a serial killer? Was this a mass shooter? 
Instead, we find out from an article in the Daily Mail that this was a man who had a history of primarily low-level offenses, but because of a picture posted on Instagram, caused uh, probation officers to try to bring him in on a probation violation. And so the Department of Corrections is not off the hook either. There needs to be an investigation into how probation violations are used as an excuse to hunt down and come after and ultimately kill black men within the state of Minnesota. It all works hand in hand together. Now those false media narratives which have not been adequately denounced about Winston Smith show that unfortunately our media, even after what happened with George Floyd and seeing that initial false report that he died as a result of a medical incident, are continuing to believe false narratives from the police. We are demanding a higher quality of journalism and greater levels of integrity from our local media. Absent from those media narratives is also information about the history of the U.S. Marshals. It's important for people to understand that the Marshals are the oldest federal law enforcement agency in the history of our country. And in 1850, Marshals were being used to round up fugitive slaves. From 1850 to 1864, they were specifically assigned with the task of rounding up black people who had escaped from slave plantations and bringing them back to their white slave masters. That history has never been accounted for. There has not been reparations to black people trying to get in touch with their freedom, their relatives, as a result of the behavior of the U.S. Marshals and the federal government being used in that way. And just like they did from 1850 to 1864, they're still rounding up black people and denying them access to their freedom. There's an article that I want to call our media's attention to this song. by the Marshall Project in collaboration with USA Today. And here's the title of the article from February of 2021. U.S. Marshals act like local police with more violence and less accountability. The federal agency's teams have killed an average of 22 suspects and bystanders a year. Given the fact that we've all seen movies about the marshals, we see them glorified in terms of their actions, that has caused the public to not question their behavior, their practices, and their lack of transparency and accountability, not to mention the deadliness of their actions for often low-level offenses. Not the serious murder suspects and criminal offenses that we think about when we think about the marshals. So according to this article, in cities and towns across the country, marshals have set up task forces largely staffed by local law enforcement officers who get deputized as federal agents. Now when these officers are deputized, that doesn't mean they receive any special training. All they have to have is a minimum of five years experience on a police force. And even if they have had pre previous excessive force complaints against them, they could still qualify to become deputized as a marshal. Now it is important for people to understand that two-thirds of the marshal's arrests since 2014 were of people wanted on local warrants, not federal ones. Though many police departments have come under public scrutiny for shootings, marshals and their task forces have not even though they are more likely to use their guns. The Justice Department has refused to release the kind of information about marshal involved shootings that major police departments made public. It is absolutely ridiculous that at least 177 people were shot by a marshal, a task force member, or a local cop helping in a marshal's arrest. 124 people, mostly suspects and a handful of bystanders, died from their injuries. In addition, seven committed suicide after being shot. On average, from 2015 to late 2020, they shot 31 people a year, killing 22 of them. Those statistics from the Marshall Project show that we have a serious problem with our U.S. Marshals. And again, Mona Doman, given her background and expertise, ought to have known better than to allow them to round up a black man who they weren't even looking for in the first place. They were going after someone else on June 4th, and they suddenly got a tip 
that Winston Smith was at Stella's and so they decided to go after him. And it was not a coincidence in our opinion that this happened the same day that the city of Minneapolis decided to dismantle George Floyd Square. So yes, we have serious concerns about what is going on and we expect Governor Waltz to step up to the plate. We know that he contacted officials in Washington, D.C. to inquire about the marshal service, but we expect him to do more. We want him to convene an independent panel to review these federal task forces, the behavior of the U.S. marshals and those who have been deputized by them, and issue findings and recommendations to the public. We renew our calls for Governor Dayton to stand strong on our police accountability bills, nine of which are currently pending at the legislature that will help keep Minnesotans safe from the type of brutality and violence that Winston Smith, Dante Wright, George Floyd, and so many others have experienced. Additionally, as was said earlier, we want Joe Biden to appoint a new head of the U.S. Marshals who will be accountable to the community. We can't continue to sit by and allow these things to happen while people's lives are being taken while their reputations are being tarnished and the trauma that is impacting our community as a result of these out-of-control police forces. Thank you.